Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 141 of Gains, and this one is titled Strike a Pose. The man started opening his giant makeup kits then and placing them out on large trays on wheels. This thing was huge. You'd never seen anything so big in all your life. Ah, uh, that's a lot of makeup, you commented to him as he flitted around, checking everything over. Oh, of course it is, Cherub. Only the best when we're getting ready for the service, right? He said with a wink before pulling out a product to match the color to your face. Let us pray, he said as he found the right one. This man had a gift, very talented with makeup, and he enhanced your natural beauty so well and so professionally that you didn't even know that you had anything on. He had matched your lipstick to your lips so well they just appeared to be just a more perfect version of your lips and he added in false eyelashes so well that you actually believed that he had somehow made new eyelashes grow for you. Whoa, you said in awe as he was finishing up. This is amazing. The heavenly choir should sing of your beauty because you are stunning. Can I get an amen? He cried. I'll say amen to that, you said with a smile. Thank you, sweetness of the Garden of Eden. Now, let me take you to Cherry. She'll be doing your hair so it flows like silk woven by the gods, he said with a grand hand gesture and you smiled as you got up from your chair. Thank you. Um, sorry, I didn't catch your name, you asked. I am Ethereal, a prophet sent to bless this world with beauty, he said with a grand bow. Oh, well, thank you, Ethereal. I remember your good deeds, you replied. His eyes welled with tears as he straightened to look at you. That is the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me. Thank you for reaching out your healing hand to me. I can tell you are a person of the light, for you glow so beautifully, he said. You smiled bashfully. Thank you, you said before a little petite lady entered the room. Hi, she sung. I'm Cherry. You must be Yin in for your interview today. That's me, you said with a smile at her. Well, aren't you a beautiful girl, she said with a big smile. Come with me. Let me get your hair done and then it's off to the photo shoot. That's quick, you said with surprise as you were taken away by her. She worked her magic on your hair and once she was done, you were sent down the hall to the next room, the place where they would be taking your pictures for the magazine. This is so surreal, you said to the man who had opened the door for you and ushered you in. I can't believe I'm going to be in the magazine that I used to read when I was at the high school before I came to the hero course. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. I saw the news report on you and I've got to hand it to you. You really did a fantastic job. He said with a grin, as he gestured for you to stand up on the white platform where all the cameras were pointing at. Um, it really wasn't just me, it was all of us, you said truthfully, and I keep repeating that until the day I die. Everyone gets the recognition that they deserve. You'll make a great hero, he said, stepping in behind the camera and adjusting the zoom and brightness. And you glow like a hero too. I have to turn my brightness down, he said with a chuckle. Okay, Yin, give me a big smile now. Left hand on your waist, peace sign on with the other. You did as he said and he clicked a few shots and checked the exposure. It was while he was doing that that another man came flying into the room, the door banging open so loudly it made you jump with fright. Gerald! The newcomer yelled. How dare you take pictures of this queen without letting me get her dressed up? Shame on you! Oh, Caleb, Gerald said with surprise. I was wondering why she was in trackies and the school jumper. He laughed to himself but Caleb didn't find this amusing at all. I swear to God, no one cares one bit about what I do here. I am the backbone of this company. Do you understand? The backbone. He then marched over to you and took your hand. Come, honey, let's get you into something gorgeous before you pose for the cameras. And with that, you were dragged away into the dressing room to be fitted for the day. You tried on a few different outfits, but in the end, you and Caleb decided that a semi-fitted one-piece jumpsuit was the best fit for you. Oh, honey, look at you, Caleb gasped when you stepped out of the change room. How do you feel? I feel so good, he replied with a grin. I really like this one. Of course you do, because it looks like it was made for you, he gushed. Okay, off you run back to Gerald to get some snaps of your fine self. I'll be watching the interview when you do it, so big smiles for me, okay? Oh, no problems there, he replied with a grin. Thank you so much, Caleb. I really appreciate you taking the time to dress me. Oh, he gasped, eyes welling with tears. No one ever thanks me. You're so welcome. No, I mean it, you said honestly. Thank you. Oh, he gushed. Please, let me hug you. You're just so sweet and beautiful. He bent in for a hug and then let you go and you headed back out to the other room to get some photos taken. It was a bit of a whirlwind after that. You did your interview that was televised and they told you that they would be taking snippets of your interview to put it in writing and put it in the magazine, which you said was okay. And then you were to walk into another room to do a meet and greet and some signing for those who had just watched the interview from the other room or elsewhere and had come to meet you. You'd seen them do this for other heroes and had sometimes run down to their studio when you saw a favourite hero on screen just for the chance to meet them in person, but it was usually so busy you often missed out. 
For a split second, you worried that no one would be in the other room, but your fears needn't have been there because people were screaming your name even before you'd entered the room. It was a little overwhelming, the amount of people in the small room, and you gave the crowd a wobbly smile before being seated at the desk there and handed a pen. The ushers and guards there were keeping control of the crowds, and one by one they were allowed to come up to you and ask for an autograph or a picture. At first you felt a little awkward, but then slowly settled into the role, and by the tenth person you were feeling a lot more relaxed. Ah, uh, we are famous queens. Stay tuned for chapter 142, coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.